What is it that makes a horror movie good? What would it have to do to classify itself as a successful horror movie? Well, of course, the answer to that question is completely subjective. What people like and what people are scared of obviously differ from person to person. But whereas the subject matter might change on a person to person basis, the method in which one goes about creating those scares tends not to need to change all that much. Tension, anxiety, and dread. Those are the three words I'd personally use to best describe what makes a horror movie traditionally good. As humans, we all feel those emotions. We all know what it's like to feel at least one of those things. It's something which as a species we all have in common and can easily relate to. They're probably leftover residual effects from when we were hunter-gatherers doing what we had to do to survive. The same feelings that told us then, if you mess with that snake, you'll probably die a painful death. Stay away from that bear unless you want your insides ripped out and played with. And don't go near that cliff face, otherwise you'll be a crumpled mess of bones on the floor and your family will starve to death. For a large portion of the world, we're not thinking about things like that anymore. Most of us don't need to worry about the dangers of the outside world. We're not having run-ins with venomous snakes, hungry lions, rabid honey badgers or agitated bears. So for the most part, those fight or flight emotions we have go unchecked in our daily lives. Of course, there's the general anxiety of things in our current lifetime, and there are people who suffer from more serious anxiety problems than others. But for the most part, it's not because we could immediately die the moment we leave the safety of our cave. So with the dangers of everyday life not being so much of a threat to the average person, we're able to use those emotions for other reasons. Take advantage of our fight or flight system to use at our own pleasure whenever we choose, and not simply because we have to or we'll die otherwise. Going back to movies, if a movie can trigger those primal instinctual responses from me in an effective way, I'd say it's achieved the job it's set out to do. It's like going on a roller coaster ride. You get that anxiety, you get that fear, but you also get the addicting, fun, adrenaline rush which accompanies it. Because ultimately, you know you're going to be absolutely fine. That's what horror movies are like. They allow us to use these old fight or flight systems we don't necessarily need to use like we once did. And now we can use them for our own sick, personal, twisted pleasure. Now let's talk about what I personally feel which makes a bad, or at least an uninspired horror movie. One which doesn't utilise the three previously listed emotions well. Tension, anxiety and dread. That could be for several reasons. They could play with our emotions, giving the illusion that the film is building up to something before ultimately never delivering on it. And on the other hand, they can cheaply abuse our fight or flight system with, you guessed it, jump scares. I personally feel that jump scares do have a place in horror. It's just the manner in which they go about being used. You can successfully build tension in a scene, ever so slowly filling the viewer with more and more dread as you're transported to the shoes of the character you're following. Ultimately, being able to feel as the viewer what the character could be feeling, increasing tension and dread, and then the scary payoff. A good example of this being done well is the nurse scene in The Exorcist 3. There's a lot of time spent in this scene specifically for the build-up. We spend upwards of four minutes following this character as she's unsettled and on edge investigating several noises she can hear. And then we get a fake out jump scare, which in turn puts the viewer's state of mind at ease, diffusing any tension we might have been feeling, letting you know that the potential danger is no more, and now your mind can rest easy. And then it gets you. It's done more than simply playing a loud piece of music and having something jump out in your face. It has earned the right to be something truly terrifying by messing with any preconceived expectations you might have had once the scene started. Not only is it an example of a good jump scare, but it's also an example of a bad jump scare being done right to amplify the effect of the real one. I promise you this all ties back to the title of the video. This nonsensical madman rambling is more relevant to the topic than it may seem. I just felt I needed to state why playing with these fight or flight emotions has the potential to really pay off when it's done in an effective way. And the open house is a perfect example of how to do it wrong. 
The premise of the movie is that a mother and her son move out into the mountains to stay in an open house that the aunt owns, after the father was tragically killed in front of the son when buying eggs from the store. That's the setup for the story. It's established we're dealing with a mentally distraught young man and a mother who's just trying her best to make it work for her family. And now both of them are in a fairly secluded area that they don't know very well. That's a perfectly fine setup to the story. It establishes the characters as emotionally vulnerable, struggling people in an unfamiliar place. It puts them in the perfect position to be characters in an effective horror movie. While the movie does its best to attempt this, I feel that it never comes close to the possible potential that this kind of story has. With a title so outlandish as this video's, I better have a good reason for saying that about something which, while on the surface level, looks absolutely fine. It's decently shot, it's lit well, it's acted okay, if not a little bland sometimes. Why would I call this bad if it has all of those things going for it? Well, simply because it has all of those things, yet does everything wrong in terms of making it an effective horror experience. How can it do everything right, yet do everything wrong simultaneously? It comes off feeling as if it has no soul. The whole setup behind them being in an open house is actually kind of cool, because you've got strangers entering and leaving the house, and if you think about it, there's nothing which would stop someone from hiding in this large house and just not leaving. But the movie commits an ultimate sin, by plain as day having a character explain that exact reasoning as if the audience isn't smart enough to have already grasped the concept. Especially by this point in the movie, several unexplained things have happened around the house, like spooky ghost cereal, doors slamming, and phones going missing. Even when these strange events start happening to the characters, they kind of just look at them like, huh, ain't that weird, and then not tell the other one about it. There's a difference between, say, when watching a slasher movie and shouting at the screen, don't go in there, don't open that door, and watching this movie and shouting at your screen, why are you ignoring this? Why are you acting like it's not happening? They're trying to create a believable, realistic set of scenarios, but all hope of this is completely squandered once your characters stop acting like humans. Any sense of immersion or believability you might have had, sure as hell has been thrown out of the window now. Looping back to my Exorcist 3 jump scare example, where I stated that it uses a fake out jump scare to instill a sense of safety into the viewer, that would be an example where it's okay to have a somewhat cheap jump scare, because it amplifies the real scare which is coming next. The open house, time and time again, pulls fake jump scares out of its sleeve, but the difference is here, there's simply nothing more than a fake jump. They're abusing the instinctual fight or flight systems we have just to get a cheap fright. Where I do think jump scares have a place in horror, it's certainly not when they're done like this. Over and over again, this movie relies on this cheap tactic to make you jump, but in the most uninspired way possible. It's not like, say, Insidious or The Conjuring, where a jump scare is accompanied by something actually scary or threatening. Here, it's thrown about willy-nilly, as if the filmmakers thought it'd be an adequate substitute for actually putting in the effort and required build-up to scare the viewer. Like, do we really need a jump scare used in place as a transition with someone dropping eggs on the floor? On paper, it might have seemed like a smart idea. In practice, it comes across as cheap and teaches us, the viewer, to brace for the next unearned, nonsensical jump which actually just turns out to be something completely innocent and harmless anyway. A well-deserved jump scare with the correct build-up and atmosphere is the equivalent to being told a scary story around a campfire at night, which has you well and truly shitting bricks way after the story is done being told. And a bad jump scare is the equivalent to your friend jumping out of a bush and going boo, startling you for like 1.2 seconds and then it's done. Sure, there's a time and a place for the friend jumping out of the bush scare, but if it was to happen every time you walked past a bush, you'd get over the novelty of it pretty quick. It's a poorly done cliché. And unfortunately, that's probably the best way to describe this movie, a poorly done cliché. It's a blend of things from a bunch of the most financially successful horror movies of the past decade or so, kind of just mashed together in hopes of that's all it's going to take to make a good horror movie. A creepy old woman, a big empty house, items moving in unexplained ways, people appearing behind characters and then disappearing, and the big bad scary guy. 
It's not a problematic thing that this movie uses previously used concepts. They're a tried and true way of getting scares out of people. They obviously work, if done right. To put it bluntly, the horror aspects of this movie just come across as a dysfunctional, disjointed mess. And why is that? Well, there's the poorly done, aforementioned jump scares which contribute, the characters not acting like real people when certain things could easily be avoided if they just communicate properly, and also the fact that there's a lot of stuff which just doesn't make sense to the viewer. Obviously a horror movie doesn't need to explain everything to the viewer for it to be effective. Sometimes the most terrifying thing can be the fear of the unknown. But this movie does weird things which seem like they might have some sort of connection to the core plot, but when the moment is said and done, you're left wondering what was even the point in that. There's a reoccurring older woman who seems to be suffering from some sort of mental condition. She's relegated to popping up from time to time and serving as a cheap jump scare to remind the viewer we're supposed to be watching a horror movie. The way in which she appears and the things that she says leads you to believe that she may have something to do with all of the strange happenings the family are having to deal with. But no, she appears right before the antagonist meets his grisly demise, and at this point you might be thinking, okay, now we're gonna see how she's actually connected to all of this. And then she just wanders off further into the woods before he is ultimately killed by somebody else. There's more time and effort spent towards this old lady than there is towards the actual villain, who also doesn't make any sense by the way. There's no point to this character, you'll think she's connected to it in some form or another, maybe something to do with her deceased husband who keeps getting brought up, but nope, nothing, nil. That leads me to the real villain, the big bad if you will. Yep, that blurry mess. Over the course of the movie, strange things are happening around the house. Things are being moved, phones are going missing, etc. Giving off the vibe of it possibly being a paranormal incident. Especially with the inclusion of the old woman. Ghost movies love old women for some reason. Well it turns out, all of these weird occurrences are happening because of this big guy. Evil Boots as the Wikipedia page calls him. Because the only part of him we see in focus is his boots, I, I guess. I dunno at this point. Eventually, he decides he's had enough, and then he kills everybody. But that raises more questions than it answers. Why'd Big Man mess with them so long before killing them? And in fact, why is he killing them? He spends all of that time moving cereal, slamming the occasional door, and stealing glasses before ultimately just killing them anyway. Who is this guy? Why does he do what he does? Is he a ghost? Is he a crazy person? What's the deal with this woman showing up all the time? Is she the character the viewer is supposed to expect to be the bad guy, before finding out she actually isn't? If so, why does she show up right before Mr. 13 Reasons Why gets his brains bashed in? <sighs> Nothing makes sense. Things just kinda happen, and then people die in boring ways off screen. Movies don't always need to make 100% sense. They don't always need to give that satisfaction to the viewer. But the ones who do that and pull it off well leave the viewer thinking about possible theories and possibilities days after they watched it. Not the open house. All it does is leave you wondering why you even bothered wasting your time watching it. What's become more and more apparent in the last couple of years or so is that the bar has been set dangerously low for Netflix originals. Something having the stamp of Netflix original serves more as a warning than it does as a sign of anything good. The Open House was created on a budget of just $100,000, which in the world of current day movies is basically pocket change, so it's commendable that it even exists in the first place. Unfortunately, the issues which plague this movie wouldn't be solved with a higher budget. If something is fundamentally broken, spraying it with gold spray paint won't solve anything. That brings us to the end of this video. I just wanted to say thanks to all the people who have been watching all the movie videos lately. You may not have subscribed to the channel to hear about horror movies, but I'm glad to the people who have actually stuck around and watched them. They seem to be performing relatively well. After watching this movie, I kind of want to watch a good horror movie. If anyone has any good suggestions of things on Netflix to see, definitely comment them down below and I'll let you know if I've seen them before. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly throw in that the channel now has a Patreon, so if you want to contribute that way then that's a possibility now, no pressure though of course. And don't forget to follow on Twitter for useless updates about videos coming soon. Thanks guys.